morning everybody welcome to my shabby craft studio i am always grateful you are here so i'm working on the linen piece today i tried to do a similar video a couple days ago and yesterday and it was a flop so <laughs> we are going to work on a bead today i'm going to cover this bead um this is a i don't i don't have the packaging for this bead so this is a small black bead. Let me see if I can show you the hole in it. There's the hole. It's a pretty wide hole. And I I got these uh, uh, several years ago at, um, I believe I got these at Michael's. Um, I have looked for similar beads. Um, they've changed them up over the years, so... You know, you just have to find something with a wide enough hole in it. And then I am going to snip this off. Now, I did a bead on my other part of the... Oopsie, snipped off too close. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to worry about that then. I am going to do a double surgeon's knot there. They are less likely to come undone. And then, oops, oh, chubby fingers. Yes. And then do it again. And this is basically going to be hidden anyway, so. And you could even put a dab of glue on it if you wanted to. I'm a knot. <clears throat> and there's probably other ways of doing this, you know. Okay, eyes, come on, wake up. I know it's morning. Oh my goodness gracious me. I'm having a time. I hope this finds everybody doing well and working on something that you love to work on. I've been working on this piece off and on, and I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's a big, you know, quite the change for me. Yes, I'm struggling. I'm sorry. I should have done this before I started. The video, waste of time. Okay. Now, I'm not going to cut that off as short. <laughs> there. All right. Now, we're going to hide that anyway. We're going to kind of make that go inside. But basically, all you do is you're wrapping the bead. So, um, I'm going to... I'm letting the thread run through my first loop. And you could let them run through all the loops if you wanted to. And we're going to stuff that inside. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I am going to do it this way. Like a half hitch all the way around. And that will give it an interesting top as well. So... You know, there's a lot of things that I tend not to experiment with. I watch other people and I'm like, ooh, I can do that. But then either I do put my own twist on it or I don't. <laughs> and I follow it, you know, directly step by step. And then I'm thinking, well, you know, why don't you try changing it up a little, Martha? Because, you know, make it interesting. <clears throat> <clears throat> and then I see things where, like, especially on Pinterest, where other people have taken a stitch or they've taken a piece of fabric and, you know, whatever medium it is, actually, not, not just stitching. I'm sorry for the frog in my throat. I really am. I'm a little hoarse today. But, um, you know, people do some interesting things with mediums. I'll tell you. I love seeing people do, you know, the unexpected. <laughs> it's just fun. It's just fun. So we have a very sunny day today. When you look out the windows, it looks absolutely gorgeous, but it's drop dead humid. And it's going to be 90 something today with the heat index much higher, of course. I am totally over summer, like totally done with it. 
I cannot, I, I hate to be the person to wish time away with the experiences in my life. That's not a good thing, but, um, you know, I don't like the heat and humidity. I can be very happy looking forward to September, October, November, three of my favorite months of the year, <laughs> honestly. I love the colors. I love the turning of the trees. <clears throat> Sorry, all the squirrels uh, hiding their nuts. And we have lots of those around here. And I'm just using a six strand embroidery floss on this. Um, to kind of help cover it quickly. And you don't have to do the loop. You can just, you know, just wrap your bead. Go in and, in and around and in and around and in and around. And you do need a wide hole though, because um, the thicker the thread you use, of course, the more it's going to take up space inside that hole. And wooden beads are very light, surprisingly. Lighter than glass beads. And who would want to cover up a pretty glass bead anyway? So. <clears throat> Tony is off doing the grocery shopping since it's Friday. And we try to not go in the grocery stores on a weekend. We had such a nice trip up to Alexandria the other day. Really enjoyed it day before yesterday. Not just because I got some goodies out of it, but I just I just really like road trips. Although I'm more nervous now than I used to be. Ever since we hit that stupid deer that got in our way in Pennsylvania that time. I mean, I'm grateful that the people that towed us were able to fix our van in 24 hours. Got the parts. Couldn't do that nowadays because parts aren't available. But they got the parts overnighted to them. And we paid for it to get fixed. Thank goodness we had the ability to do that. And, oops. Um, and the insurance company paid us back. Reimbursed us. And... Yeah, it was definitely a good thing. So, it was just the tra trauma of <laughs> hitting that poor deer. Oh my God, why was she standing in the middle of a road that people are going 70, 80 miles an hour? And it blew out every single thing in the front part of the van. Anything between the engine and the, the grill of the van, the front part, yeah, totally blown out. Okay, so I am going to, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the coverage. Can't really see the black through it. Okay, so I am going to just go next door here and do a knot. And then I'm going to go up here. And there we go. Put that side down. And that's going in the middle of this thing that I did the other day when I had a camera fail. And so what I did was I took some, I just took some yarn and you could use any yarn you have. This is a wool yarn that I happen to have that I bought to dye and I never dyed it. And um, it's wool and nylon. And let's see, it doesn't really tell me the size. It says number 
no, that's not what it says. That says $10. Da, 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 da. Two eight. It's two eight. So this is, this yarn is actually equivalent um, to a size eight thread, actually. And so I just took it and I wrapped it around this spool about probably eight times. And then I just stitched over it. And I sort of showed how I did that when I did this video, should be two videos ago, I think. So there's that. And um, I also practiced some bullion flowers. And this is out of my new thread, my eight thread. This is out of, um, good question, Martha. What is that out of? Uh, oh, that's a five. And that's a five. That is Steph Francis. This is um, a DMC thread. So... And I did a few leaves around there. So I might do one of those if I have time. Um, and let me show you. This is the other bead I did, but I didn't do this one on camera. So that was the other bead I did. So I'm going to do a few, a few drizzles out of it like that. And I just have to decide what thread I want to use for that. I might use this one. That kind of matches a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. This is a thick mercerized cotton from Steph Francis. That is the label. I'll tell you, if you can afford to buy from them, I really do like their threads. Very nice quality. Um, I would not get, this is just me, I would not get the um, like sample pack kind of thing because they're they're mis dyed like that one has white in it so you do have to be careful of that you can work around it if you get them but um yeah let's see i'm not going to use that needle i am going to use this needle i think Ooh, maybe not i need a taller needle so i can get the drizzle Get the thread up through the um, bead and then make the drizzle. So you need some needle length there, right? Oh, come on. Behave. Oops. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I have thread in my mouth. Yum. Congratulations, Martha. You did it. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. So what's everyone up to? Are you guys making Christmas gifts? I'm not making Christmas gifts. I don't send anything to anybody. So I have to decide how I want this. Do I want it in the middle? I think I'm going to put it down here near the bottom. I'm thinking of doing other stuff up here inside. And this is like really haphazard, weird, I don't know, just, I'm just throwing stuff together and playing. I, I didn't draw it out. I don't have a, a pattern for this. Wow. Okay. So set the bead down. All right. I probably should anchor that bead on there. So I'm going to go through it. A couple places here. I can't remember. I, I must have done this on the other one. <laughs> I must have. And probably it's better if you do it in the thread that you did the, you know, that you have left over from wrapping the bead. All right. My body really isn't awake yet. Um, I slept like, you know, when you sleep really hard. And, like, it takes a couple hours to come out of it. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Today. Right now. All right. One more. Put this one over here. Anchor it down there. 
down there, as my family would say. It's going down there. Uh oh. Except we have a knot. Yeah, I did a whole video yesterday. Worked really hard on it. Played it back. Couldn't see half of what I was doing. I was so angry. So now the camera's on timeout and it's way up high. No close ups. Because when I try and do close ups, I go way off camera, even though I'm looking at the camera and I'm, I can see my hands through the camera and I can see my work through the camera. When I go to play it back, I'm not on camera. It's almost like my camera shows the right thing, but when I play it back, it's so not the right thing. Yay. Okay. Just got to get tough with it sometimes, right? Just pull. Just pull. All right. So now we'll go back up. Come on, behave, you can do it. It's a little crowded down there. Come on. Okay. I'm gonna put one more down. Oh, poo. Oh, poo. I'm gonna put one more down the back because, you know, don't want it tipping over. <laughs> tipsy bead. <laughs> we could have a tipsy, tipsy bead. All right. And back up through the center, hopefully. All righty. Now we can drizzle. Now I have enough thread left for maybe two drizzles. So you have to unthread the needle. Stick the needle down inside where you want it to go. Make sure it's going to go all the way through. And it is tight with all those stitches in there. Okay. And then we're going to just cast on. I hope you can see. Cast on a bunch of stitches. I don't think I'm going to make the drizzle really high. Oops. Come on, Martha. Get your brain to work with your fingers. And I'm only going to do one or two because I can do more later. Oops. Stay in there. <clears throat> now, if you don't have a wool mat, um, say you have a quilting mat, uh, ironing kind of mat, something like that. But these wool mats are pretty invaluable when it comes to doing these stitches. Okay. I'm not counting, I'm just concentrating. Because <laughs> there's some days it just takes more concentration than others. If you know what I mean. I'm hoping YouTube doesn't give me any troubles with uploading today, uploading this video. We shall see. Nope. That's my washer making all that noise if you can hear clanging in the background. All right, I think I'm done with that one. I don't want it any taller now to get this thing threaded. Could be tricky. Oh, my stomach. Growling. That is not my dog. That is me. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to hold on to the stitches, pull the, push the needle through, pull it through. And this is where, if you need to, you can use your pliers, but I highly recommend getting the pliers with the rubber on them like these. I got those at Joann's, used a coupon. Goodness gracious me. My whole bucket is going nuts. Okay. Uh-oh. There it is. 
I'm like, where's the needle? Now, I did not put any bead on the end of this. Chose not to. And you can pull it. You have to kind of stretch your stitches out and pull it down into the button a little bit and you get a curly cue. Because when you do the cast-ons, you kind of get this twist thing happening. Now I'm going to secure this so it stays put a little better. And it doesn't come loose and kind of hang out weird. There. See that? Isn't it cute? I think it's so cute. <laughs> All right. One more, I think. And then maybe I'll do a flower. Of course, that's tedious and time consuming, too. Stitching seems tedious and time consuming, but, you know... I need something that I can, I don't, no, don't go up through the other stitch. I need something to distract my brain from everyday thinking because everyday thinking gets me into trouble. So, all right. Now. Cast on a bunch more stitches, y'all. The thread is a little blendy blendy. I probably should have used something different. Um, something with, with maybe yellow in it or brightness to it. But it is what it is. I can add more later on if I can get the needle through it. Through the bead. Now see, if you didn't want the twist in your curly cue here, which I do want. What you do is you cast on a right-handed one, right? And then you cast on a left-handed one. And that'll keep it from doing the, the curly thing. So anytime you're doing a cast on stitch, if you don't want it to curl or twist, you do one, then you do the other. Oops. So I don't know if I mentioned this in, I know I mentioned it in my video I made yesterday that I could not publish. I ended up deleting it. But Tony has gotten like three summonses for jury duty. So he called the courthouse and said, you know, what the heck? <laughs> What is going on? Why me? <laughs> Isn't there anybody else in Orange County that you can pick on? And they said, well, you're on a three-month rotation. And once you get through this rotation, you don't have to serve again for three years. I looked at him. I said, that's incentive to move out of this county within the next three years. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Are you going to go through? doesn't really want to. So she said, if you serve, he got the first one like week before last, and it was for August 17th. And of course I had a doctor's appointment on August 17th, so I had to change that because we don't leave Evan alone anymore. Um, everywhere we go, he goes. Okay, so I'm not going to do another one of these right now. I will probably do more in there, but I may just use a lighter thread to get some contrast going. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so she said if you serve on the 17th, you don't have to serve on the other ones. You're free to go for three years, right? But the other ones are in September, and we were going to try and travel in September, not anymore. So his, I guess his three months, they don't tell you, hey, you're up for three months for possible court jury duty. Don't leave town. They just send you these notices willy nilly. 
So we never got anything for July, but it started July 1st. And then it's July, August, September through the end of September. Well, now we can't go anywhere because if they cancel the 17th, he has to be available for the other ones, but they don't tell you they're canceled until the night before the trial. Yeah. Count us unhappy. So can't travel in October. I'm getting my knee done. <laughs> What's left? <laughs> so I did these roses. Let me find a color I want to do them in, in a thicker thread. So I think I'm going to do, so I did this yellow in this, and that's a DMC. No, it's not. These are um, a weird brand I got. Um, they came in a package of, I think, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, six. I think they came in a package of six. And I got them in either Michael's or Joanne's. And there's some weird brand that I, I can't remember the name of. Prism. They're Prism. Not Prison. Prism. And so, yeah. Um, so I did that in that one. I don't want to do another yellow. I'm going to do a pink. Is pink going to look really odd here? No. I'll do pink. Okay. And they are size 5, like I said. And you need a lot like a yard and a half. And sir, hmm. I'm looking to see if I have anything else thicker. It really is nicer in a thick, thick yarn. Um, Cause this can take a while. I'm sorry, I'm looking. I'm looking. Maybe I'll do it. No. You know, I gotta use my variegated. This was a size eight and it's just too small. I think this is a five. Prism. Oh my goodness. I'm just procrastinating, aren't I? No, I think this is an eight. I'm not doing it in an eight. It'll take way too long. Let me poke around in here and see what I've got. Oh, green. All right. Back to the... Flower's got to be variegated, so... I'm going to try it in a six strand. Just have to find the one I want. The one I want don't really want it to be green and yellow. I guess I could try this one. Although I don't think that really goes. Let's do this one. All right. <coughs> Decision made. It's going to be that one. This is going back in here. Okay. This is thicker. This is a DMC5. The other one had to be an 8. I'm sure of it. It was too thin. All right. And we need, what do I do with my really long needle? There it is. I think I'll use this one. So you do need to be able to do a lot of, a lot of um, stitches for the bullion. Oh. Come on, Martha, you waste more time here. Please stick with me. <laughs> I promise it'll get better. <laughs> Hopefully this is long enough. All right. Yeah, I love all my size eight threads, but now I'm realizing I really need more size fives and threes. I really do. But it'll have to wait a while. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see if this works. Okay, I'm not zooming in any more than that. I'm going to do colonial knots in the center. I really like the colonial knots in the center. Um, I just do. Uh, let's see. All right. 
So you want to go. So you have a backwards. Am I doing this right? No, I'm not. So a backwards C. C or the right side of a heart. And then you're going to go put your needle under that and over. And then I do over twice because I just like the look of it. You can do more times, but basically for me, that just sticks up higher and I don't want it to stick up higher. I like the way it looks. It looks like a little flower. So there, oh, get the hair out of there, gray hair of mine. So there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. Actually, that one's pretty big. I'm gonna just, no, I'll do a couple. Okay, change in mind. And I'm probably a little close to this flower, but that's okay. Okay, so again, backwards C. This is one knot I finally got down pat. Backwards C, slip your needle under. Wrap, wrap, and poke through. I still haven't gotten my tote bag downstairs to um, dye it. Okay. Gray hairs don't want to go away. And then one more. I'm going to do a third one over here. Okay. <laughs> Pull my arm way back as far as it goes. This thread is so long. Backwards C. Slip it under. Hold on to it. Wrap, wrap, and down there and hold on to this thread. If it comes loose, you're going to get a big thing sticking up. Okay. Well, that didn't land where I wanted it, but that's close enough. Okay. Now, we are going to start our bullions. I'm going to start in here. In this little divot in here and I won't need very many stitches to begin with because I'm just going like halfway around this flower here I don't want to stay on the screen halfway around this flower so I'm gonna go down and up Two, three, four, five. probably won't need more than five to get around there maybe I'll do six I'd rather be on the safe side than not have enough. I've done that a couple times too. Oh, darn. Hate when that happens. <laughs> and then I flip it over in my thumb and I pull. And you wanna wrap it around the colonial knots. Or you can do really tiny bullions in the middle and not start with such a small center. So then you have to go down, anchor that, and come, I'm gonna move a light here, oops. And I hope that lights up the back of it better all right so here's my first bullion I'm coming up a couple stitches this is the end of my first bullion right here okay so I'm coming up a couple stitches back from that and of course there's lots of good tutorials online for this you know Now there's six stitches, hold it down. Pull it so it wraps around there. Use your thumb, wrap it around your center and then back down. And back up a cup. Here's my the end of my bullion. I'm gonna back up a couple stitches and bring it up there. 
actually what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to come up between the colonial knot and the bullion stitches. I'm going to pull it in here because you see this gap here? I'm going to want to cover full, fill that in. I don't want that showing when So you kind of work with what you've got, right? If you don't have a gap there, you don't need to fill it in. You can just keep going around. If you've done two bullion stitches there in the center, then you just do it that way. You just keep going around those and you don't have to fill in the little gap like I have. Or you put more colonial knots until you have a nice little circle of them with no gaps, or French knots, or whatever, whatever your little heart desires. There, so you see how it it is filling in the gap there? Okay. So if you think you need to fill in a gap, you can go inside. And I'm going to go inside on this one as well, right here. And I'm going to come outside about three stitches from this bullion I made here, the first one. And yes, I switch hands with my wrapping and stuff. I don't know. I'm I'm weird. <laughs> you should do it this way because it lays right then. You don't have to fiddle with it as much. I don't know why some of them I do with my left hand and some of them I do with my right hand. I'm just weird. But we've established that, right? Okay. I'm going to move the camera out a little bit. Oops, wrong way. Because I don't want to be off screen. This is where I really messed up yesterday and I was so upset and frustrated. <sighs> you do an hour video and then you have to delete it. It's just not, not cool. All right, so I'm going to go in here because there's a little gap there. You see this gap where it's sticking out? I'm going to start inside that gap. If you didn't have a gap and your stitch went all the way around, then you don't have to do it that way. Uh-oh. You know what? That was my anchor stitch hole. So I have to go back down. All right. I'm going to come up just this side of it. This thread is thick enough. It should cover up that gap when it goes around. All right. So now here's my first stitch. Here's my first bullion knot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about four threads in. So you want to overlap the first one a little bit. Let's see if I can stay on camera. I'm going to overlap like a third of the way and not go through the bullion knot. Okay. Oh. Such a dork. <laughs> I get carried away. <laughs> Don't do as I do. Do as I say. All right. You're going to go from the top and go in about a third of the way. Come back out here where your thread originates. Now I'm doing eight stitches because I needed to wrap from there to there. And as you, I'm going to do nine. As you move around the outer part of your flower, you're going to need to increase your stitches because you're covering more area, right? So you have to grow the number of winds that you put on your how, how many times you wind on to your needle. Okay. 
Now, if you don't want to go in this direction, you could go in the other direction. Whatever seems intuitive to you. I do think I'm doing this backwards for a right-hander, but then that's not unusual. I often get, ow, feels like something just bit me. All right, so I'm about halfway through this one. All right, oh, that's not what I wanted. No. See, I start talking and I get confused. And I get confused anyway, so it's, that's nothing new. I don't think that's where my thread needs to be. Okay, let me rethink this. I need to be quiet for a moment. I did this on my other ones too, I messed it up. And I fixed it, you can't really tell. All right, I'm gonna back out. Find my flower, find where I left off. Okay, I left off on that side. All right. So I'm gonna come up on the last flower. And I'm gonna go down. I wanna come around here. So I'm gonna go over to this bullion knot. There. Now that's a lot longer space, so I'm going to do 11. 12. <laughs> I want to be sure. Now, the only thing is, if you do it too long, what's going to happen is it'll stick up a little. And you can always tack it down if it seems to stick up too much for your taste. See, so that's going to stick out a little bit because I did too many stitches. But that's okay. I'm going to tack it down. I'm going to come up just about three stitches from it. I'm going to go and I want to go around. I'm skipping this bullion and I'm going to go in this one here. The one that sort of sits before that. Which means I'm going to need a lot of stitches because I got to get around this area here from here to here. And the more, like I said before, the more you go around, <clears throat> the more stitches you have to add. Okay. Then I'm going to go down, come up here. That's my anchor. And then I'm going to come around. I'm going to skip this bullion and come around here. You want your you want your petals to get longer and longer as you go around. So I'm going almost to the end of this bullion here. I'm getting close to the other one, so I'm going to probably only do one or two more and then end it. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Excuse me. And the thinner your thread, the more you're going to have to wrap when you get to the outside. Because you're covering more space. I find it easier to lay it down and work on it. All right, I'm gonna do one more. So that's my anchor th thread, putting it in where it ended. And then I'm gonna come around here. This will be my last My last petal. Wiggle it off the needle. So I always admit I'm not the best teacher. So go look it up online. <laughs> there's a lot of a lot of people doing it, but there's my flower. And then just anchor it in the back. Then you can put little leaves around it. And you have yourself a little little garden. You put leaves around it like I did those. I'm gonna do a couple of those. I forgot to look for my needle yesterday on the ground. I dropped a needle. You could also do it in ribbon if you wanted to. Um, I have not tried it yet. In a ribbon. Okay. Green. I think that green is too thick. Of course, I could just give it a shot anyway. What did I do these in? I did do that in that. I'm sorry, mumbling to myself, talking to myself, trying to figure out what I did before. Because I can't remember from day to day what I did or what I learned. I teach myself a knot and then I forget how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Some reason my bobbin got all discombobulated and it's not not wound on properly. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put I'm going to put a couple of little leaves to share between these two flowers. And I did this on the other one and I really liked it. So we'll see if it comes out as well. Maybe a little bit bigger. So it's just um I think this is called a daisy chain. Just a little little knot there or a little little daisy chain there. Back in here. And so you have to anchor those at the end, of course. Another one here. Go down, come back up here. here. And 
There's all kinds of ways to to make leaves. I've uh, been poking around on Pinterest, but I have yet to play with some of the methods. So there's the first three. And you can fill those in with green, which I might go back and do. Oops. Anchor it, Martha. They're actually prettier if they're smaller. <laughs> I think. There you go. A few little leaves on one side, a few little leaves on the other. You could do a uh, fly stitch coming out of there. You could do whatever you want. So that's my stitching for today. Tony will probably be home very quickly with the groceries, so I'll help him put those away. There's a load of wash in the washer. And I have to change over to the dryer. And then maybe I'll do some more stitching later today. So I hope you all have a really wonderful day. I don't know if you learned anything from me, but we did the bead, we did some drizzles, and we did a flower, and we did some leaves. That's a lot for me to get done in an hour. Less than an hour. So go forth and stitch or create whatever you are creating. And I'll be back on the flip side. I love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and sticking it out with me. I know this was a longer one. And I know it's boring to watch stitching, but maybe you were crafting along with me. I hope. I hope. So take care, everybody. See you on the flip side. Love you. Bye. Happy crafting.